Oh, baby. This is the Unrationed Podcast. My name is Evan. My name is Tony. I'm Josh. And yeah. we start every episode by sharing our wild moments, which are moments that we feel wild. Tony, do you have a wild moment for us this morning? I'm actually going to go with a dream. I had oh, baby. The, the, the dream that woke me up at 4.50 this morning. I was I was in a it was like a library uh and then you, the top floor of the library was um kind of cut off as it was under construction and or being remodeled and then I ended up on the roof of the library and all of a sudden my family was there my my wife and my children were there and we were out on this sort of fire escape um by the library and then I look down over the fire escape and I see like this big white bobcat. It's like, or or, it might've been a lynx. And um, if either of you was a big cat expert, but it was like, it had the the big ears of the lynx and it had like kind of black spots, but it was down there as big ass cat. And, and I yelled at the cat and my wife was like, don't do that. You'll tell it. And I was like, Ugh. and then they like went inside, but then I turned around and I see the cat, the coming up the fire escape. And then the cat was there like coming at me and I woke up. Um, so I figured we would just take the rest of the podcast to get into what that means. Did you Before Google we... it? Yeah. Did you Google it? No. Oh, man. Okay, and before we dive too much into what that means for you, I had a big cat dream this week. Tell me. It was a tiger. And I was in a familiar place, but it wasn't my backyard. But my feelings inside, it was like I was in my backyard, but the surroundings, like it wasn't my backyard. So I felt like I was in my backyard, which is to say maybe I felt safe. And... I had my phone out. I think I was just with my dogs. I don't remember like who was there with me. I don't think it was any other people, but there were animals that were also this like familiar feeling. And I look over, like I point my camera beyond the fence into these trees and there's like these little tigers just playing around. Like, oh my gosh. So I start recording it and I like look to my right on the other side of the fence and there's a big tiger like pawing around at the dirt and like he was getting something and i this is this next part is probably because i've been hanging out with tony too much but i turned my camera towards it and i think this is gonna be awesome on linkedin Uh, Uh, uh. and about that time like as soon as i had that thought it looks at me and it was it was not a friendly look and jumps over the fence and i just the la- like when i woke up was l- like i i had dropped the phone and i was just laying still and i wasn't i like the tiger was behind me and i was facing the other direction but i was not going to move and that felt very wild too just laying still not knowing if this tiger was about to kill me or not That's typically when amazing. i die in my dreams i i'm laying really still like I, that's my last response to like, uh, what what's gonna happen to me before I die? So I just, I like lay still and I accept it, and then I, like die. Uh, so, anyways, two two big cat dreams in in the week, man. Yeah, I wish I had one. <laughs> yeah, Josh, what you, do you have any sort of uh, like a big bird, uh, dream or dinosaur dream maybe? Uh, no. I mean, I played dinosaurs with my kids this week. I was an Indominus Rex a lot. Does nice. That, does that count? Sure. 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 Yeah. No. Do you have any dreams from this week? We could make this just a dream episode if you have one that you remember or just a <laughs> meaningful dream in general in life. I don't know. Could this be I rarely, I don't remember my dreams very often. So like that, that, that one even stuck that I woke up from that one and it remained vivid was, yeah, that was unusual for me. Yeah, Josh. The one dream that I had that I've remembered from this week is that (laughs) we had an all team meeting on Tuesday. So my dream was Tuesday night. 
and my whole team for Mission Matters groups remote. And there was one guy on the team on Zoom who just started making like really inappropriate jokes and it like it was completely out of context. And I just could remember the feeling that I had that like, well, great. Now I have to say something and have a conversation with this individual because this is not acceptable. Um, and that's the only dream that I remember. And he's not a cat. Hmm. Um, uh, so, do, you, do you guys listen to this Young Ian Life at all, the podcast? Mm-mm. They interpret a dream or explore a dream at the end of every episode. And it's like uh, maybe like my favorite podcast segment that exists because you have these three psychoanalysts with somebody who submitted a dream with some more details. Like, what are you feeling? What's the context? Like, what's going on in your life? Uh, You know, tell me about the different pieces. And then they just analyze the crap out of the the person's dream and it's very uh, fun and it makes me think i could analyze my own dreams but i cannot analyze my own dreams <laughs> all right i just pulled up a website do you guys want me to read some stuff about the links because no, yes boy. yeah let's do this all right Ooh, links dream meaning from 15 different sources a mysterious cat that is rarely seen may come to help you find something hidden from view or that has been kept secret it must be uncovered to ensure your psychological health and well-being. A lynx can also come to say that you've been protecting a secret too long. Does that feel right? Should we search bobcat or mountain lion? See if you like that better. I I think it, in, it's intriguing that it says, so whether this is true or not for you, Tony, the idea that somebody can protect a secret as if, so typically something that needs to be protected uh, typically something that's important is protected and like instead of using a word like hidden a secret too long like hidden <laughs> is this like negative connotation but protect yeah. implies that it's actually needed to be protected in a way that's not like a shameful or condemning yeah. thing it's like you've you've done your job you've protected this thing but it may be time to stop protecting. I'm not saying this towards you, Tony. That word was just intriguing to me. That it, that really is, actually. Um, I love that we're getting on this topic because it's a very important one. Let me read the next section and then I'll come back to my, uh, my point because I think this is fascinating. All cats relate to the power of the feminine principle. The larger the cat, the greater the power of this totem. This medium-sized medium-sized cat is actually named for the brightness of its eyes so the medicine that it carries connects with sight and vision when the lynx appears in a dream you are being gifted with the ability to see clearly and navigate stealthily as a result of such vision yeah pretty good well that's kind of that's kind of interesting yeah Yeah, that's kind of interesting um going back to what you said evan i actually learned a very valuable lesson by sharing a secret and how much I hurt somebody and I didn't intend to share the secret I didn't think it was like you know this would happen but it was a family member and they had they had confided in me about something and I was playing golf with another relative and I drank too much and somehow we just got started talking and I shared some stuff and all of a sudden it went like wildfire like other people found out And my cousin uh, called me and was like, hey, this could have only come from you because you are the only one that I told. And it broke a huge level of trust, you know, broke trust significantly. And I've like, I've been like a lockbox sense. Like I I don't tell anybody anything unless I explicitly get permission to do so. So the element of like protection, protecting a one-on-one relationship with somebody is extremely important. And it doesn't matter if, you get put into situations that make you uncomfortable. If you've committed to that, then you need to hold uphold it. And it's not like a secret. You're not doing anything wrong or shameful or whatever. You're just honoring a commitment you made to somebody, which is somehow a foreign concept most of the time. Um, but anyways. Yeah. And there are situations that seem to come about where you like have to navigate the tension between honesty and protecting a secret too it's like yeah but but i believe there's always a path there like there is a a, a tightrope to be walked between honesty or like 
it, where you're not moving into lying and you're not also revealing or crossing any boundaries that yeah. you've been asked not to cross. Um, I'm super intrigued now about the tiger, particularly the, the, the all cat dreams are feminine. Yeah. Like that's intriguing to me. And then yeah. the bigger the cat, the bigger the, that feminine energy, um, and seeing the smaller cats and then turning to my right and seeing a big cat that then causes me to freeze and, uh, not know if I'm going to, that thing's going to kill me or not. Yeah. You want me to read this to you? Yeah. Yeah. What's the tiger? What's All your right. source? Uh, I'm on dreaminterpret.net. S sounds <laughs> incredible. <laughs> Legit, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be in the show notes. <laughs> this episode sponsored by. <laughs> the cultivation of personal authority and power may be the message of a tiger in a dream. Tiger signifies the power to exert your will in the world and the possession of leadership qualities. It holds a regal authority that is seldom challenged. A tiger may come to mention that you take the lead in orchestrating much needed reforms in some community service. For many non-Christians, a tiger is symbolic of strength, good character, and solitude. A tiger can also be a manifestation of a spiritual enemy in someone's life, attempting to stalk and devour them. The tiger is the ultimate animal symbol for strength and sensuality and is also connected to vitality and health. When a tiger appears in a dream, you are being acquainted with a powerful totem to guide you through any difficulty. Tiger medicine is the perfect an antidote to fear and aversion for the courage, strength, and cunning associated with this animal are without parallel. So how do you guys feel about going to someplace like dreaminterpret.net whenever you have a dream can you learn something from this type of activity or is it all a joke I'm not inclined to take it particularly seriously um I mean the the podcast you referred to, I would put some stock in what those analysts have to say about a dream like that. Uh, random internet sites. <laughs> I mean that that stuff sounds random. Pretty. <laughs> it is a dream interpret, and we're talking that about dreams. dream interpret dot net. <laughs> That's. Um, but um, I mean, it sounds like a horoscope to a large degree in a way that. Uh, like, okay i mean yeah I'm not, but i yeah i mean i definitely feel that, that there's the dreams mean stuff like yeah. uh, that's pretty clear they mean something they're reflections of the subconscious and like what's on on our minds um yeah, but yeah i would want to go to a, a a another source i'd want to double check that get a second opinion i'm right it seems like the truth is it's really hard to peg what it actually means and so it can only be meaningful to the degree that you you like analyze your life with that lens right so we you get this reading about tiger and what do you do with it so like you start sitting with it and spending time looking at your different actions looking at your different things and so it that exercise makes it meaningful and applicable potentially because it's a lens it's a it's a, a frame of reference um so i find it helpful and fun <laughs> yeah i do find it fun which um uh, so i if i've done a little bit of enneagram work and as a seven on the enneagram fun is like the well one it's like a trigger am i avoiding something uh if i'm only trying to focus on things that are fun but also I have I deeply value fun. So like if I can learn something while having fun, it's interesting to me. And then I'm thinking of this in the context of the race we're all about to do too, because it seems as though the integration piece, like what what we all balk at is like, or or where we think we could find meaning and and something as silly as having a dream and going to dreaminterpret.net, like what makes that meaningful? I I I think I'm aligned with 
you, Josh, in, in the sense that you're saying it's as meaningful as you make it. Like it, if it sends you inward and causes you to think and do some work, then that's meaningful. Um, if it doesn't, and you're just trying to look for a trick to yeah. figure out your future or like uh, sidestep some necessary work, then it's not going to produce results or transformation in a way that really diving into some stuff is. And I think the same is true about this race. Like there's a, I've, I've thought about this a few times in regards to this 50 K is that there is a path where I do this thing and there's no transformation. Like I just go run a race and then come home and am the same person that I was before I ran the race. But I do have the desire for the training and the experience to do something to me. So yeah. uh, it, it, I'm just trying to Sounds think good. through like how, how should this be, could this be engaged with in a way that produces like change of some sort? Yeah. So I'll go, I'll go to my wild moment to like tie it together maybe. Um, so Saturday I had a, I had a three hour and 30 minute run. And so I decided to like stay relatively close to my house. So there's like the seven plus mile loop that I did three times. And um, it was funny each time at different parts on the run. I had this like flashback to different races or different trainings that I had done over the last like decade. And it was like all these like little like aha moments. I was like, oh man, I completely forgot about that. And so that like stood out where that like felt wild, where I'm like, I'm in one run, but I was being like transported to different moments in time, mm -hmm. all through the connection point of running. And so I was able to like think about those different lessons that I had learned. And so that was kind of like a, a good reminder for me that I must keep going. I must keep doing this because it's like this one activity is connected to all of the same activities that I've done. And somehow I will be able to access all the learnings that I've had as a result of running. Um, so it was just this like very meta thought process and I was probably, you know, tired and wanted to eat something. So that always helps make your mind a little kooky, but um, it made me, while you were talking, it made me think about that where it's like, I think the the truth of it is that there's going to be moments when we return from a race like this, that we're going to be, we're going to default to some like bad behaviors or, or things that we, we thought we had made progress. Like we're going to have moments, but the buildup of constantly doing something a little bit harder and learning something about yourself that all like builds up. It's like in a bank or something that we can access at different points in time, but there's going to be moments where we're like, yeah, we're not our best selves and we've regressed a little bit, but if we keep moving, we can still get back to that baseline fitness or, you know, whatever you want to call it. Tony, do you have any thoughts? As we're getting rolling on, what we're doing for ringing the springs and bringing this group of guys together. I'm, I'm thinking about how we set the intentions around what change we're interested in having happen, you know, through this experience uh, in, in a way that I think can contribute to what you're you're referring to out and where I'll, I'll say that i think a, a challenge like this i do think it has a naturally cleansing quality to it uh where you know, the thing is just going to strip you down and move some things around uh in a way that very few other experiences do um in a way that I think does affect change one way or another. I think it's uh, like, that's just going to happen. But to Josh's point about how you uh, uh, 
how you take that back and have it persist, you know, in in the day to day life. I'm thinking about that intention setting on the front end of, you know, like, are you trying to get more focused? Are you trying to be a better husband? Are you trying to be more present with your kids? Are you like what? Are, what are you really wanting to work on, in a way that you know, that we're actually spending, we're putting in reps and time and intention along the way, you know, just using this race as sort of a focusing mechanism. Uh, and then the accountability and support of the group can kind of help reinforce, give tips, give support for trying to do things differently a little bit along the way. And then we're kind of primed when we get out there that we're going to spend more time you know, thinking about those things, reflecting on those things, praying on those things, meditating on those things, whatever you do out there. Mm in a way that when you get stripped down um, and and you actually get out of your mind more, out from be between your ears a little bit more because like, the experience just breaks you down and breaks down a lot of those intellectual barriers that so many of us, uh, I mean, frankly, I feel like I spend a lot of my time trapped in there. And like that gets removed, it gets washed away for a little bit at least. And like it's in that that liminal space there where you can like feel things in a new way that that then on the back end, um you know, the the needle can have moved in some real way. Josh, am I just making that up? But does that make no. any sense? Dude, it's it's it like it makes a ton of sense. Um, it's funny. I think I shared this maybe last year. I did my first hundred K and that morning, you know, I woke up at 3 AM, 4 AM. Cause my, my race start was pretty early and I was praying and meditating beforehand. And I had this like meditation. I was like, let me find joy in the suffering. And <clears throat> I got out there and I was around like mile 16 or 17 or something like that. And I started talking with this gal, I forgot where she was from. But uh, we probably ran for a mile together and I was getting ready to like kind of just go uh, forward. I was like, I didn't catch your name. What is it? And she's like, oh, my name's Joy. And she was like the only person like I got three people's names and one of them happened to be Joy. And I just found it just amazing. You know, just like that reminder, like, yeah, if you think about these things, like you will, you will be stripped down, but you can find what you are seeking in these moments. And I just thought that was really, really special. And so Tony, yeah, when you were talking, there was a lot of things that, yeah, that made me think of, I, I met this guy from a, a local nonprofit here in uh, Colorado Springs, really impressive dude. And he was giving me this tour of uh, this place called Springs Rescue Mission. And, you know, he was, he asked me a couple questions, like take me on this, you know, this tour showing like how intentional they were about restoring dignity in individuals. And uh, he's like, you know, everybody asks like, oh, what do you do? Like, that's the first question. He's like, how would you respond to who are you? And I thought he was just like, you know, going with a typical flow. And he's like, I'm asking you, how would you respond to the question? Who are you? And I kind of sat there and I'm like, it's a very question I'm sitting with right now like <clears throat> why am I doing this race and is it helping me become the person that I want to be but that requires clarity on the person that I want to be who do I want to be and uh it was just like kind of like sit me and I was like you know what I don't know how I would answer that in this very moment because I have conflict and that's why you know some of these things like running a hundred mile race or running a hundred k or running a 50k they, they help strip us down of the things that we think are our identity and just say, nah, dude, <laughs> you're just, you know, you're just a, a bunch of skin and bones and, and some soul. And you got to figure out what you stand for. So. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. Uh, the, how is the training going? For you, gents? It's going well. This week has been my least motivating like i've been the least motivated this week to get out and run did my first run yesterday which was wednesday so like it's the first time that i haven't run in three days which is probably not 
like great for training. I did a run on Saturday and it was in 45 degree weather rain. It was just miserable. Supposed to be a long run and I ran seven, uh, sopping wet miles and then ran yesterday. Uh, I think overall, like, I don't feel like I'm out of shape or unprepared for the race. Uh, but I've strayed from like the set run on these days, these many miles this week. Yeah. Hmm. Why? The, yeah, that's a great question. Can you? It uh, is. Yeah, it is. <laughs> I don't, I, it, I'll just borrow Josh's answer about who am I? It's like, I don't, I don't know that I have a good answer for that in this moment. Uh, maybe on my next run, I will learn some things. It's not a physical thing. Like not you're a not, you're not. Yeah, no, I feel great physically. I don't have any pains. Nice. But you should maybe get out for a run. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Uh, time, yeah. I mean, I can make, I could come up with so many excuses or like reasons. Uh, but ultimately, I don't think, I don't believe any of them as I think about it. It's like, oh, I don't believe that I don't have time. I don't believe that it's, you know, I didn't drink enough water or like whatever the thing. It's like, oh, no, you just drink water and you wake up an hour earlier. Like, those things make a lot of sense to me. So I, I don't have any good like response to myself for anything I'd come up with to tell me why I'm this week has been not a great week wow. of running, but yeah. Well, for what it's worth, you're, you're doing just fine. Thank you. You just ran a marathon, uh, six weeks ago and you know, like you're, you've been doing a good job maintaining. So and that's my amateurish assessment of like, you know, you're, you're all right. Good. Thanks. I'm glad you're feeling good physically. As a, yeah. I have self-diagnosed myself as having um, a form of tendonitis on the tops of my feet. Yeah. Oh, it's, no. I'm choosing that it's that over stress fractures because stress fractures are going to make it really man. hard. It's yeah. going to make it really hard for me to do 100k in in uh, ten weeks. Um, have you talked to your coach? I sent him an email this morning. Okay. Be like, um, but um, yeah, I did the whole I, the the medical version of uh, dreaminterpret.net last <laughs> night. I'm like, what is wrong with me? Um, where I've got the I've got these pains on both of the tops of my feet. My runs, like I did 15 miles with 1400 foot of game on Saturday at the pace I wanted to. Felt good. Nice. Did the five mile, did like an hour on Sunday, felt pretty good. Monday's my rest day, ended up resting Tuesday as well, and got out yesterday for 45 minutes. So I was like, and like, it's like, it's not getting better. It's been 10 days now. And I'm like, I, I think I may need to take the foot off the gas where it's like, I'm, I, I, I'm, I'm pleased with my fitness level right now. But like, I went from my miles of like, 15 to 20 a week to like pushing 40 a week for like two to like the last three I've done like in the thirties all the last three weeks. And like, that's, I think that's, and I'm still weighing in at 180 as opposed to more like 176, 175 in a way that's like, yeah. I probably, I probably turned the dial up too hard. So I'm, I think I'm going to be, chilling out and just like walking for a yeah. few days and and yeah trying that but yeah. we'll see yeah i feel like um last week i bailed on a couple of runs just based on like how i was feeling i felt the uh, run down and i was having some like knee pain and everything and then i got a, a decent run in on tuesday um and then i'll run Today and tomorrow, I'll probably do like 30 minutes, but I have like a longer training run. So I have a 50K this weekend for a training run. So I have like, um, I think I have like a eight mile run or so. 
like an hour and a half run on Saturday, and then I have a 50k on Sunday. So I'm trying to take it, you know, kind of easy this week. But overall, feeling feeling good. Lungs are feeling good. I what, feel like my issues. What 100k or what 50k are you running? Oh, I'm not running a race. It's just part of my training. Dude, that feeling. So you're. I I love that I'm chatting with somebody who's running my race as a part of their training schedule. Like it's it's really great to have people who are doing harder things than than you. Uh, and that feeling the first time I ran a half marathon for training for the marathon, it was the first time I ever ran a half marathon and it wasn't for a race. It's like, I finished it and there was no medal, no reward. Yeah. It was like, this is awesome. And now I, I, I don't know how many half marathons I've run at this point, but it's like zero medals and a lot yeah. of half marathons. And Amazing. it feels, it feels pretty awesome. So yeah. it's awesome that you're running a 50 K as a part of your training. I saw on Strava, I don't know if it's accurate or not, or Strava, but I don't know how to say that word, um, that you got your PR on a 30K last weekend. Is that right? Um, I don't know. Okay. I, I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> did it feel like a good run? Like, did you feel like you were moving think, at a good pace? I think I was up in the mountains on that day, right? Okay. I think that was two weekends ago. So, yeah, actually, that one did feel pretty good. I maintained a pretty solid clip for it. I think I was like, I had a lot of elevation gain and I think I was still at like a 10 minute pace or something. Um, so it did, it did feel pretty good. Um, what's a 30 K that's like 18 miles or something. Yeah. But... We lost Tony. He's gone. He said, see you guys. Uh, we got to get out of here. All right. This is a good place to, I, I, I would like for our next episode to be on intention. I have a lot of like, I think that's really important. I think it'll be important for this cohort that is about to jump into this ring the springs thing with us. Um, it, that seems right. Are you guys okay with that? We're actually planning what the topic is ahead of time for our next episode. Off brand, but I'm on board. <laughs> All right. Intention yeah. it is. Um, I've, I would like to learn more about that and, put some effort into setting an intention uh, for this thing. That seems important. Yeah. Good call. Let's do it. Thanks for listening to the Unrationed podcast. If you'd like to learn more about what we're doing, head to wildsandthewoods.com. I believe I have wildsandthewoods.com that forwards to wilds and the woods too, because sometimes when I say it, it's like, wait, did you say wilds in the, what, what are you saying? So either one, whatever you heard, go there.com. And uh, we've got a page set up for Ring the Springs if you're interested in running with us. At this point, registration is probably closed, but it won't be the last one we're doing. Uh, so reach out to us and uh, we'd love to invite you to the next one. Is that oh, YouTube Shorts? YouTube, wildsandthewoods.com. That one you do have to type out and not in. So wildsandthewoods.com, YouTube Shorts. Tony just posted our most viewed video there if you'd like to go see it. I recommend it. Thanks for listening. Oh.